Somewhere along the line, Cobalt Press released the fourth iteration of the Warlock Grimoire series. And I completely missed it. And then it hit my doorstep and I couldn't be happier because the Warlock Grimoire series has a special place in my heart. So let's take a quick look at this one. Hi there fellow roleplayers and game masters, my name is Mr. Trask and today I don't want to talk about Warlock Grimoire number one. I do not want to talk about Warlock Grimoire number two, which still has the coolest cover of all of the Warlock Grimoires to my opinion. And I don't want to talk about Warlock Grimoire number three, because, because I have reviews on these books on my channel somewhere. I will try to link them somewhere uh, under the video or in the video or whatever. Today I want to talk about the fourth iteration of the series, Warlock Grimoire number four. Now if you do not know what the Warlock Grimoire uh, are basically Cobalt Press puts out like these pamphlet like um, booklets that you can either buy as PDF or physically from their Patreon. If you're a Patreon supporter, you'll automatically get them, but you can also buy them from uh, their website, if I'm not mistaken, with all kinds of different bits of seemingly random lore for the Midgard campaign setting, their own campaign setting, Midgard by Cobalt Press. Um, it's all about like a, a certain species, a certain type of magic, uh, new player options, new monsters, all of that stuff, and it always feels completely random, and that is why I absolutely love it. That's why I like these books. I like these books for just sitting down and like, oh, my players are playing in and around the Midgard campaign setting, uh, let's open one of these up, right? And there's always something there like one of these has like a bunch of information about the rat folk living in the sewer system of Zo the Zobek city and how they organize the sewers and how there's shops and how there's there's taverns inside the sewers for the rat folk and people who want to visit that kind of part of the town all of that random stuff for the Midgard campaign saying that you can also use in your own campaign setting because most of it you can just plug and play in your own campaign setting right so um, I have reviews on all of these and what they do is they basically, um, this one is the first one, and it is just uh, the Warlock Grimoire. Uh, includes a uh, tire I've never seen before. Uh, it says somewhere right here it's the first 10, or the first 11, or the first 12. Uh, then the next X amount of Warlock Grimoire pamphlets are all. all um, thrown into this one the next amount like I don't know 20 to 30 or something like that is are in here and then the latest are uh, all in here and what they do is they reorganize everything so it's not just like the pamphlets back to back in the book they reorganize everything so that all of the player options are with the player options all of the monsters are with the monsters all of the uh, world building stuff is with the world building and everything has this really old school feeling type artwork it has this yeah, pamphlet-like feeling, and it is just, it is filled with absolute um, insane ideas and, and weird out of left field stuff, which I absolutely love. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Warlock Grimoire number four uh, PDF. And as you can see, uh, outside of the cover image, the entire thing is in black and white, cool, old school feeling artwork. Which I love. I like this kind of artwork. It's really cool. And as you can see from the table of contents, there's all kind of all kinds of random feeling stuff in here. There's uh, bits about uh, lore and storytelling from Baba Yaga with uh, a bunch of uh, stuff about her. The endless skies. There is uh, the city of uh, Zobek, the Dock District, where they just talk about like the do Dock District, and they talk about that already. Look at this artwork. Look at this. It's like a gear forged at the guard <coughs> at the gates. It's a guard at the gates of Zobek. Really, really cool stuff. And they talk about the Dog District in uh, the uh, Midgard uh, campaign setting book already, of course. Uh, so what the Grimoires do, they go deeper into a certain thing they already talk about. Just a little bit more information. So if your players are really um, adventuring in and around the Dog District, it's really cool to pick up, pick up these, uh, these pieces of lore for that. Um, there is uh, all kinds of new monsters in here. Here. There is all kinds of yeah, like uh, information about magic in here, and then there is player options. Now I don't want to go through everything for this because that would take way too long, and it's too much like random stuff upon random stuff. I'm saying random stuff, and I don't mean that negative. I mean that in a positive way. 
Um, but I want to talk about one thing in particular, which is uh, Tick Tick Boom the Cobalt Trapsmith, uh, which is a really cool little bit uh, that you can use in any game, in any 5th edition game, and it is character options, uh, Cobalt Traps. Now they say you don't need to be a Cobalt in order to be able to set traps, of course, you can set traps, whatever race, whatever class, whatever uh, you are, but Cobalts just have a natural tendency to create traps, and they go over different different kind of traps, uh, the alley-oop, which is a spring that launches you 15 feet in the air and you drop 15 feet away, taking 2d6 bludgeoning damage in the process. Uh, there is a book binding, which uh, the target must make a, a DC 18 dexterity saving throw or be trapped by the net and be restrained. So you open a book and then a net comes out and it restrains you, which is really cool. There is... Um, Stuff about, uh, wait, there is, like, there is, <laughs> this page is really cool, like, this, there's this mechanism, how you have a domino, stones, and then a ball, and it goes here, and the ball hits a cart with a candle, and then the candle hits a rope, and the rope burns, and the axe smashes this flask, and the flask explodes, uh, Cobalt kind of stuff, right? Uh, there's more stuff in here. There's the triple threat. Um, all kinds of like different traps you can set as a player, especially as a Cobalt, uh, which I absolutely... I love this. I love this kind of stuff because you can use it in any game. It has such cool IDs. Um... Uh, kobolds who require their privacy may make use of a no soliciting trap on their home. This trap consists of a bulb of hallucinatory gas triggered by the door's knocker. When triggered, a dose of gas is released from the bulb typically hidden within the frame of the door or behind decorative foliage, and fills a 15-foot cone. Any creature within the area must make a DC 13 constitution saving throw. On a failure, they become frightened as their mind is filled with visions of horrible monsters. The way I envision this is, oh, let's go to this kobold's house and ask them for help or information or whatever, and you knock on the door with like the knocker, right? And then this gas comes out. And then for you, if you fail the, 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 the thing, this door just comes alive. And it, this door just gets like this big mouth and it tries to eat you. That's what you're seeing. That's totally not what's happening. And while you're on the floor, all frightened, ah, this door wants to eat me. All your other party members are like, dude, chill the fuck out. There's nothing happening because it's only a DC 13 constitution saving throw, meaning that probably only one or two party members will be extremely um, afraid of the door and the others will be like, dude. And then the kobold might like open their door and were like, oh, I was not expecting you. Come in, come in. And then uh, everything is good and said and done. And I think, uh, yeah, that's kind of stuff that Cobalt Press and the people who work for Cobalt Press, kudos to everybody who works at Cobalt Press. That is the kind of stuff why I like Cobalt Press. That random, uh, out of left field type of stuff that really sets off these amazing role-playing uh, moments uh, for your game. Uh, there's new spells like Analyze uh, Device, Dismantle. It's like a dismantle spell, right? Um, but something I want to talk about as well was uh, there is an expert trapsmith, uh, a kobold with proficiency in alchemist supplies, thieves tools, tinker's tools, or smith's tools. When you make an, a, a dexterity or intelligence check, uh, or saving throw using tools to craft or disarm a trap, you can add both your dexterity and intelligence modifier to the roll. Very simple, little feat, specifically for kobolds, very simple in the way it works, but very cool in the way it works, right? Uh, there's also a nimble feat, um, you can evade explosions better and all that stuff, so you can double your proficiency while you are evading uh, fiery explosions. Um, other stuff, is, uh, there is this boombox you can create. The boombox is an ingeniously simple contraption made for of clockwork and filled with gunpowder. As an action, you wind the crank handle on the side of the prime to prime the box, and you can use the bonus action to set the notch and key timer up to two minutes. Once the box is wound and this timer set the gears inside take down until the set time at which point uh, a flint and tinder mechanism inside the set of and that doesn't really sound ingeniously simple but it also says ingeniously simple to cobalt standards and then basically it's a boom box it opens and it boom it's basically a claymore mine i would use this as a claymore mine i would use this in a sense that um if you you can you can set a timer, but you could also set a string. And if somebody walks through the string, this is this claymore mine. 
in your face. And then you get like this boombox sizes. You have a tiny, small, medium uh, area radius, 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet. I would create a cone. I would, I would redesign this to be a cone and to have like a triggering mechanism because that basically is a Claymore Mine, right? Claymore Mine has like this front towards enemy on it. If you, you need to point it towards the way you want it to explode and explodes in one way, which I, I think is really cool. Uh, crafting time is there. The gold piece is the piece that it costs and the DC to craft it. Um, there is breath. Cobalt Breath, um, which is also a thing that you can create. It is a device that, that's called Cobalt, Cobalt's Breath. It is not a breath weapon, but it kind of resembles a breath weapon. Uh, it has a, a failure chance. DC, uh, oh, sorry, it's a D12 to roll, and in a one, the weapon explodes in your hands and is destroyed. You take 8D6 uh, damage of the weapon's type. Yes. So you're you want to set it, and then it explodes in your hand. If you roll a 1, so 1 in a 12 chance. 1 in 12 is pretty damn high. Chance it explodes in your hand and does 8d6 uh, damage. 2 to 5 uh, weapon functions, but a piece falls off. Must be repaired uh, using an action before it is functional again. Like it. 6 to 12 weapon functions as normal. So as you can see... Cobalt uh, Press really, uh, like the writers of this, really put emphasis on, like, uh, like Cobalt's like creating cra craps, <laughs> like creating traps, uh, crappy traps uh, that are cool and are awesome, do a lot of damage, but they're also really, really, really dangerous to use because Cobalt's aren't really, like, they think they're good at tinkering with everything, but every now and then something will go wrong and uh, Cobalt's will not always admit that they're not really that good at it um but yeah that's basically and that just for me that really tells like how cobalt press thinks about stuff they don't necessarily uh so this is created by sarah Matson. so sarah Matsman, really really well done um they don't necessarily try to create something that is like strong or cool or whatever like oh there's this new option i want to use it because it's strong and cool and whatever it's mechanically sound um writers at cobalt press creators at cobalt press are also always thinking like how does this awesome thing that i create also fit in an rpg and create role-playing moments and actually makes sense and that is why I like these warlock grimoires I always have a feeling that with these warlock grimoires the writers and the creators just get a little bit more freedom in how goofy they want things to be and that is why I absolutely love this book series and until next video bye bye